Sometimes our lawns can become thin, dry, and leave us baffled as to why they're like that. But the problem might be not on the surface, but rather inches below. Grubs can silently destroy your lawn and others, and we are here to discuss how to prevent and eradicate them. Stick around. Hello everyone and welcome back to The Lawn Feed. Be sure to check out our social channels on Instagram, TikTok, and obviously we're here on uh, the YouTubes, but also check out our website at thelawnfeed.com that acts as our central hub for absolutely everything we do. I am Chris, otherwise known as Ope, and I am also joined by, once again, Vince at Rooted Lawn Co. and Andrew at The Dead Bod Lawn. What is up, everybody? Happy Friday. We made it once Again, Um, on this episode, we're talking about a pretty popular topic and a pesty topic. Pesky? Pesty? One of the two. Uh, We're talking about grubs. We're talking about those little buggers that can do a lot of damage before you even know that they're present and know that they even exist. And by the time the damage has been done, it's kind of too late. Um, So let's dive right into these bad little guys and learn all about grubs, what they do, and why they're not good for our lawns. So Vince... What are grubs? Well, <laughs> funny you should ask, because I'm going to tell you. Uh, grubs are the scarab beetle. Um, so what you're seeing is actually the, them in the larval stage. So little, um, they're like off-white, white-colored, have a brown little beady head. Um, they're small. Um, I mean, they're probably less than a centimeter. I don't, I don't know. Um, and depending on... Um, the life cycle is really depending on how big they are. The exact type of grub that you have in your lawn can vary uh, depending on location. So um, you can look up different extensions at your local extension office and see what type of grub uh, would be in yours. It doesn't really matter um, because if there's grubs, you're probably going to want to get them treated. Grubs like to hang out about two to six inches in deep in the soil under your grass. Um, and if you suspect that you're having some grub damage, the best thing to do is dig up an area. You can do a one by one, um, dig it a little square up and check underneath there. Usually by the time you pull up that little area, you'll see the grubs and they, they form like a little C shape. Uh, they'll be laying there um, in the fetal position. Uh, it's what's probably a better um, example of it because they're, they're, they're afraid you're going you're gonna to wipe them out. Um, finding an occasional grub here and there, that's not a big deal. Um, but if you start finding more than five grubs per square foot, so that one by one area, then you might have some, um, some issues there. So if you're starting to see some damage, this could be some dead patches, some wilted leaf blades, some dry brown areas, uh, it can feel spongy. Um, and like if you're walking on, it can feel a little spongy. Or if you actually can grab the turf and roll it back like a rug and see the roots, you can kind of start seeing them. Um, Also, if you notice a lot of animal damage, so if skunks have been digging or mold or squirrels and stuff, they've been digging in your lawn, they're looking for the the grubs. So you could have an issue there. One thing I will say is if you are trying to do that, that test to see if you have grubs, don't go in the area that's already dead. Chances are they have moved on and you're seeing the um, two to three days later effects of them eating. So so dig a spot by the little brown areas or the, or the dead spots, and you'll most likely find, uh, find some grubs in that area. In the fall, eggs are going to hatch into new grubs and begin feeding on their roots. Or not their roots, but your roots, the roots that you worked hard on. Uh, so they're going to chew on them, and they're going to start to destroy your lawn, start to thin your lawn. And as winter approaches, they start to go down even deeper. And then spring, they they, uh, rear their little heads and um, they're hungry. So they're going to start eating some more. Later in the spring, they're going to transform into a pupae. It's science. (laughs) You know, you should know what that is. Uh, And then uh, they start to go into the resting stage before transforming into the wonderful little beetle. 
In the summer, the pupae, pupao, <laughs> pp. Not sure. Let us know in the comments of how you would pronunciate that. Um, they turn into little beetles, including Japanese beetles, and they emerge and begin to chew on more um, plants and flowers and all that good stuff. So after that, they begin to lay their eggs, and the vicious cycle continues on and on and on and on. Well, obviously, the cycle is, of grubs is super important in understanding how to treat your lawn for them and then really how to go about them. Um, there's really two ways to go about it that I that, that are out there. It's either going to be more of a preventative or more of a reactive and eradicating them. So, Andrew, tell us about how to go about these two and, and tell us a little bit more on, on, on that. Yeah, so mowing your lawn taller, like two inches and taller, can actually um, help tolerate the damage a little bit more and shows less injury. So take that as you will. I mean, your lawn might look nicer if it's taller, but there might be going on underneath the soil, underneath the surface, and you don't even know it's happening. Uh, just make sure you stay vigilant on these things. Uh, keep a watchful eye on your lawn. At first sign of weak spots or damage, consider digging down a little bit and scouting for grubs. The damage threshold can vary by whatever species of grub is in your lawn and your quality of turf. So if you have better quality of turf, it's probably going to show signs of damage a little bit less. Um, what I'm about to say contains a lot of big words that I've read on packages and never pronounced ever in my life, so bear with me, you guys. Uh, we're going to first talk about preventative measures. Uh, the first ones are biological, so more of the natural ways to pre prevent grubs. And milky spore is probably the most common people know about. And this is a, a more of a natural treatment that's very effective and uh, not very effective in colder climates, but does a little bit weather, uh, what better in the warmer weather zones. Uh, milky spore might actually take a few years to achieve good results. And also it only really only treats Japanese beetle larva. So it's very specific to that. Uh, the next thing you can try is nematodes. And I guess these are microscopic worms that you actually introduce into your lawn. I had never known about this until this right here so hmm. uh, the soil must be kept wet while they are getting established and these worms will die if they're exposed to light i guess um, after just a few minutes so you have to make sure that they stay in the dark little container you get them in and once they're introduced into the lawn um, they go and they establish themselves and uh, i guess they help prevent grubs um, and kill them off so there are lots of different kinds of nematodes Make sure you are getting beneficial nematodes. These are the ones that do not feed on your lawn and they target grubs. Do not buy the wrong thing because these other nematodes, they can ruin your lawn. Now, the most common way you guys probably know are the chemicals, right? Uh, preventing uh, chlorantranolipril um, controls most species of white grubs along with caterpillars such as worms and uh, armyworms. Uh, common products that use this are Grub-X and Roundup Bug Destroyer, and these can be applied in April to June before the beetles emerge and begin to lay their eggs. Uh, Imidacloprid, thiamethazam, and clothiandin are neonicotinoids. <laughs> Nailed it. <laughs> Nailed oh, it. 10 out of and, 10. <laughs> and these are systemic, so... They are absorbed by the grass. They don't actually kill on contact, but rather the grubs begin feeding on the roots and then they're killed. Um, a common product, I've used this in the past, is actually Menards brand grub control and that uses imidacloprid. And the window applying these kind of products is actually smaller. It's like mid-June till August because if you apply too early, it can actually be washed like out of your soil. So um, it might not be effective by the time these little guys are get hungry again. So... Products that contain gamma cyhalothrin, like spectricide, triazicide, insect killer for lawns, they claim to control grubs, but according to Michigan State Extension, uh, lambda cyhalothrin, gamma cyhalothrin, bifenthrin, delta methrin, cyfulthrin, and permethrin actually do not control grubs. So it is recommended that you actually read the label and find out what the active ingredients are on these bags, rather than just reading what's on the front and going by what they control. Um, because this has been, I guess, proven that it's actually not true. So maybe choosing a different product would be a better route. Um, these kind of products, they need to be watered in immediately following application uh, with about a half inch of water. Now onto your curative measures. Uh, carbaryl and trichloroform are two chemicals that you can apply if you have grub issues that need immediate attention. 
um, early fall or spring. And these two chemicals are used as a, a curative and actually do not work as a preventative. Um, it takes 10 to 14 days for the grubs to die after application. There is one product um, that goes by the name 24 hour grub control by Bayer. And it kind of seems to imply that it kills grubs after 24 hours, but this is not true. Uh, once again, Michigan State Extension, like Mythbusters of the lawn world, apparently, um, <laughs> they say you actually shouldn't even assess for grubs again for at least five days after application of those products because, like I just said, it usually takes about 10 to 14 days. Even with that product, it takes a little bit longer than the 24 hours, right? So, and again, these should all be watered in at a depth of about a half inch um, immediately after application. And all these chemicals that I mentioned besides chlorantranolipril, uh, they actually can be harmful to bees. And it's recommended that you mow your lawn immediately before application. That way, any flowering weeds that might attract bees get chopped off and the bees are not attracted to it. We need to make sure we take care of those little pollinators. Yeah, man, that's a that's obviously a good point on, on bees and all of the, the different things that these chemicals or treatments might actually be targeting, right? So it's always good to be smart, read labels uh, when we're applying pesticides, not to harm any, harm any of the additional wildlife that might be out there that maybe we're not intending to harm or put in, in kind of that danger, right? So um, we, we always want to want to be careful there uh, for obvious reasons. But um, quick question for you guys. Have you guys had a lot of, like between the three of us, have you guys had a lot of grub issues? Because I, cause I have not personally. Have you, Vince, have you? Uh, yeah, a couple, two years ago, I had some grub issues. Um, actually took a lot of a lot of my turf away. Um, but not to get off topic, but it makes me kind of think, was it armyworms mm. back then too? Right. Not sure. But I did find grubs, and I did treat with the 24-hour curative um, for those grubs. Okay. And I, didn't, I haven't really had any issues since. Andrew, how about yourself? Yeah, uh, I think I just said on the last episode that I just discovered that I had grubs in my lawn. So I actually just put down the 24-hour grub control from Bayer uh, just the other day. Uh, it says that they, usually they kind of eat through mid mid to late May. So hopefully they're still hungry and chewing up uh, some stuff and, and dying off from this application. I thought I took care of what was in my front lawn last fall. But after doing the research for this episode, I think I actually used one of those products that advertise grubs on the package, and I fell for that ploy. So now I know better. I can look at the ingredients on the back. So I learned something, too, in this episode. It's kind of cool. So, yeah, But uh, it's just my front lawn. I haven't really noticed them in my side and back. But, yeah. Yeah. Well, hey, that's good. Kind of centralized it. But, yeah, learning experiences, right? Because it's sure. something that I've never gone through. I know that this is a question I get asked a ton, um, you know, just that's out there. And I assume that you guys are no different. So uh, it's, it's a popular one. And if you guys got it, if everyone's got them, if anyone's going through it or pro- proactively, reactively, like, it's okay. Like, people have them. There's things out there. Just go about it from a smart way. So, um rewatch this episode there's a lot to pack in there's a lot to learn from so we're we're gonna wrap it up there for this episode obviously get out into your lawn you know scout for that for that lawn damage um, or that grub damage rather um, assess the situation and obviously treat it accordingly based upon what you what you know so as always you guys thank you for watching um, and we will see you for the next episode bye-bye see you guys.